The death of famous rappers such as King Von, FBG Duck, and FBG Cash has brought a lot of attention to gang violence in Chicago as it continues to claim lives in the city. However, some deaths do not make national headlines yet have a major impact on the locals. One such case is the death of King Von's best friend, which was captured on camera. So who was he and how did he tragically get killed on camera? Early life of T-Roy, gangs, guns, and death. These three things may easily be used to summarize the lives of young men in Chicago. The sad reality is that young men, and some sometimes women as we will see, are involuntarily sucked into the never-ending cycle of gun violence and death that gangs in Chicago are responsible for. This is the same fate that fell on young James Johnson, alias T-Roy. The young man who met his tragic death at a premature age could have easily gone on to become anything he put his mind to. However, the unfortunate circumstances that were his immediate surroundings were bound to shape his behavior, decisions, and life's trajectory, and eventually lead him to his gruesome death. Nicknamed the Chirac Rambo, T-Roy put in a lot of work for O-Block before he was gunned down at only 23 years of age. The O-Block legend, who was also Vaughn's best friend, had made it a habit of tracking down ops and ending their lives. However, on Valentine's Day 2017, camera footage showed how he fell victim to his own tactics. His ops tracked him down to a store in the 2000 block of East 71st Street in the South Shore neighborhood and ended his life, just as he had done to many of his rivals. This is the story of T-Roy. T-Roy was born on October 30th, 1993, in Chicago, Illinois. He grew up on the same block as famous drill artists such as King Vaughn and Chief Keith. This block was none other than the infamous Parkway Gardens, also known as O Block. Much has been said about O Block. Most of it is negative as reports of gang violence and gang-related deaths fill the news countrywide. Despite its mostly negative reputation, O Block has been a residence to greats such as Michelle Obama. Located on the border of Woodlawn and Washington Park, the Parkway Gardens apartment complex was built from 1950 to 1955 on Martin Luther King Drive on the south side of Chicago and was the first to be cooperatively owned by Chicago's African-American residents. It was built by Chicago's African-American residents who experienced a housing shortage during the Second Great Migration due to segregation. During the Second Great Migration, more than 5 million African Americans migrated from the South to the Northeast, Midwest, and West. Those who settled in Parkway Gardens lived peacefully until the 1970s when everything changed. During this time, street gangs started becoming active in the area, and as time passed, the situation worsened. The first gangs to impose themselves on the community and cause havoc were the Mickey Cobra, Gangster Disciples, and Black Disciples. By 1990, the Mickey Cobras had little influence as the Gangster Disciples and Black Disciples became the main dominating gangs in Parkway Gardens. During the 2000s and 2010s, the area became a hotbed of criminal activities, especially with the rise of gang-related violence. By this time, the area had turned into the stronghold for the Black Disciples, which had grown to become one of Chicago's largest gangs. Violent conflicts between the BDs and their largest op, the Gangsta Disciples, the other large gang present in the area, turned the Parkway Gardens into one of the most violent areas in Chicago. Right off the bat, one can tell that T-Roy's upbringing was rough. Having been raised by a single mom, the lack of a father figure in his life put him at a disadvantage as his chances of ending up with the wrong crowd were high. Apart from that, some of his family members were already gangbanging. For example, his uncle Tokyo G, a member of the BDs, was allegedly killed by a member of Boss City in the 90s. Boss City is a sect of the GD. It is important to note that O Block was not only the area where he spent his childhood, but also the name of the gang that he would eventually become a part of and dedicate a huge portion of his life to. O Block is a sect of the Black Disciples Gang. Also, it is important to point out that the 6,400 block of South Martin Luther King Drive was not always dubbed O Block. The story behind its name is tragic and one that characterizes the never-ending gang violence in the area. Before it got its infamous name, O Block was known as Witch City, which stood for Wild Insane Crazy City. Back then, White City was feared because of their top shooter, O.D. Perry. O.D. gave his ops such a hard time that most of them were even afraid to go outside. He was good with guns, had a collection of them, and was never afraid of using them to protect his gang. Before before he met his tragic death, O.D. Perry had made Wick City a no-go zone for ops. The famous shooter had made the territory unsafe for Wick City ops that at one time, they were forced to stop coming to the McDonald's that was located directly across from Parkway. Between 2006 and 2011, it is believed that the fearless Wick City shooter was involved in more than 50 shootings. While he made his gang feared, his actions not only made the Woodlawn neighborhood a living nightmare, many young men were recruited into various gangs as they joined the endless wars. On August 10, 2011, at around 11 p.m., O.D. was riding his bike on the 6,400 block of South Martin Luther King Drive. The calm of the night was about to be disrupted by an event that would define the future of Wheat City and 6,400 block. According to multiple witnesses, as O.D. rode his bike past AutoZone, 
A person with dreadlocks subtly approached him. Before OD knew it, the person had drawn a pipe and let off multiple shots. Witnesses also confirmed that they saw two people running away from the crime scene and hopping into a vehicle, which sped away. The feared shooter was left to die on the street. As he bled out waiting for an ambulance, T. Roy held him in his arms. According to Jay Hood, a former O Block member, OD Perry's last words to T. Roy were, They got me, bro. Then T. Roy was like that with him his last little moments and T. Roy, and, and then T. Roy said that, oh, was like, damn, they got me, bro. Like, that was his last words. 20-year-old O.D. Perry was taken to Stroger Hospital, where he was pronounced dead a little over midnight. This was a sad day for Weech City and Parkway Gardens as a whole. They had lost one of their most loved guys. In an interview, Jay Hood explained that O.D.'s funeral was so packed that people couldn't even get in. Was it, bro? Because his funeral? I ain't never seen nobody funeral that packed. I didn't even know O.D. knew all them people. That was packed. People couldn't even get in that on my life. And I'm like, I seen, oh, hella years. How the hell he know all these people? Turns out, Odie Perry was loved and admired by the residents of Parkway Gardens. He did well, but O was loved, like overly loved. His funeral was packed. Even Jay Hood could not help but wipe tears from his eyes as he narrated his death. But yeah, it was it was messed up, man. Seeing him die like that, man. Odie's death left so much of a gap in the community that they decided to rename the area O Block. Whitey City also changed its name to O Block. But this was not the only reason that the 6,400 block of South Martin Luther King Drive was renamed. In an interview, Jay Hood was asked this question, leading him to reveal another reason why the name O Block was adopted. What do you think it was about OD that made him so loved? I mean, because. No, not everybody gets a block named after them. Apparently, Odie Perry was the first death in the area that had been caused by Witch City's op. Block was named, he was one of the first deaths that was from the ops. When you one of the first to die, man, it hit harder. Apart from that, he was the first one in the area to really take up the gangster lifestyle. His reputation as a shooter had earned him a lot of street cred. Also, his protecting his neighborhood from ops did well for his reputation. Then, OD was one of the first ones that was really out there with the guns. He was really shooting, really blowing. It is rumored that OD was killed in retaliation to the murder of 15-year-old Shondale Gregory, alias Tuka, who was shot and killed while waiting at a Chicago bus stop the same year. These two deaths would spark bloodshed like never seen before in Chicago. OD Perry's death seemed to affect one young man in particular, the man who had heard OD's last words, T. Roy. First, he was horrified seeing the neighborhood's idol riddled with bullets and bleeding out. Then he was saddened after it hit him that the great shooter was no more. Finally, something in him snapped. Maybe it was the fact that he was right there when he uttered his last words. Whatever it was, it changed him. Jay Hood revealed that the whole incident changed T-Roy. That sh changed T-Roy. That he, wrote. he must have been traumatized by the ordeal. He was filled with rage. One thing was certain, Odie's death had to be avenged at all costs. Odie had left some big shoes to fill, and T-Roy must have felt that he needed to fill them. It is important to note that prior to Odie Perry's death, T-Roy was not really invested in violent gang activities. He used to move with guns, but never with the intention to slide on his op. According to his longtime friend, Jay Hood, they kept guns as a result of peer pressure. The older guys constantly made fun of them, so they were forced to do a lot of things they did not want to do do just to fit in. Me, T-Roy, all us Vaughn, we all we used to be in cahoots. Yes, we used to have guns, but we just used to have it to so that the big guys wouldn't call us pussy. It's just like when you grow up in the hood and it's like, you ain't getting no pussy, you ain't no nothing, you a lame, you a goofy, so finna do what? We finna try to fucking do all this. We might not even want it, but like we finna try to open ourselves up to it so can't talk about us. Soon the killer was known, T-Roy was set on revenge. What infuriated young T-Roy was that Odie Perry's killer openly bragged about it on social media. Rumor had it that the killer had even stolen and Odie's gun and posted photos brandishing the weapon on social media. The bold killer was none other than the infamous female assassin from STL EBT, Gakira Barnes, who went by the nickname K.I. Although she was killed in the same way she had murdered Odie Peary, K.I. had been a thorn in the flesh for O Block members. K.I. identified with O Block Ops, the STL EBT set, also known as Tukaville or Tuka Gang. Gang was made up of two gangster disciple sets who merged. While O Block was on the 6,400 block of South Martin Luther King Drive, STL EBT was based around 63rd and St. Lawrence and 63rd and Eberhardt on the south side of Chicago. K.I., just like T-Roy, was thrust into gangs due to growing up around them. Similarly, she was forced to become a cold-hearted killer for the same reason as T-Roy, the death of a close friend. Reports suggest that K.I. wanted to be a social
social worker when she grew up. In fact, her mother described her as a sweet, loving girl. Although she was already part of STLEBT from early on in her teenage years, everything changed on the evening of January 12, 2011. K.I.'s close friend was waiting for a bus on the 600 block of East 63rd Street. That friend was Shondale Gregory, popularly known as Tuka. He was gunned down and died on the scene of the shooting. This changed young Gakira Barnes and turned her into a cold-blooded killer that was well-respected in the Chirac streets and feared by her ops. It didn't take long for her to become a ruthless killer in the streets of Chicago and was often called Snoop in the streets. The name was in reference to a ruthless murderer on the fictional television series, The Wire. Rumor on the street has it that before she died, K.I. had murdered someone by the young age of 14 and might have been responsible for as many as 20 murders. According to Jay Hood, K.I. used to taunt O-Block members. She was hated by her ops and was even referred to as a pest. The former O-Block member revealed that one time K.I. showed up with a bike, taunted the gang members, and managed to get away as they chased her down. That I remember her riding on a bike like, you know, taunting us and we trying to chase her back on the block, but she get out of that skirt on the bike, she gone. And yo, I, I, she was somebody that like, you, we hate it. What angered T-Roy was that K.I. openly disrespected O.D. Perry on social media. Shout out to O.D. for being target practice. Read one tweet. And OD. Rolling up on Da Dope I Fanna OD, KI did not stop as she posted insult after, however, the bold teenage assassin would soon meet her match as King Von gunned her down on April 11, 2014 told Jay Hood about it. According to him, Vaughn walked up to him, shook his hand, and gave him the shocking news. And then Vaughn walked up to me, and I'm, I shook his hand, he like, look straight. And then I look straight, and I'm like, why? Why, why, why are you telling me to look straight? He like, look straight, and what I'm finna say to you, don't look at me after I tell you. According to the former O Block member, Vaughn told him that he had shot three people, and that K.I. was the last one of the three he had shot and killed. Man, why I just run up on K.I., and um, you know, why I just ran up on them and caught and called K.I. She was the last one running out of the gate. As soon as Vaughn told him this, sirens could be heard in the distance getting closer. And I'm just in my head like, damn, for real? And sure enough, after he told me that sirens came. K.I. was hit nine times in the mouth, neck, and chest before running and collapsing on a neighbor's doorstep and passing out. She later succumbed to her injuries at Northwestern Memorial Hospital. One of the most significant facts about K.I.'s murder has never been proven. Was T. Roy physically present during K.I.'s shooting? This is because on the day the hit was carried out, Vaughn posted this to Twitter, suggesting that T. Roy was locked up. Nevertheless, O.D. Perry's murder had been avenged. Despite this, T. Roy continued to wreak havoc on his ops until the day he was also gunned down by his rivals, the tragic death of T. Roy. Before getting to T. Roy's tragic death, it is important to look at the bodies he caught as they give context to the events surrounding his shooting. One thing's for sure. Before he died, T-Roy had caught several bodies. He had become so dangerous that it was rumored that he was Chief Keef's shooter. Being a rapper from Chicago is a risky affair. The deaths of rappers Blood Money and Lil J in the gang war are good examples. Therefore, rappers such as Chief Keef find it necessary to have someone like T-Roy around who will have your back. Chief Keef has been all too willing to fuel the rumor, as he even put it in his song. In his record, No Reason, the Chicago rapper sings, I'm cooling in the trap, getting high for no reason. T-Roy grabbed my strap, he gon' blast for no reason. In the song Savage, Chief Keef raps, T-Roy, he got the semi, he'll send your to heaven. Apart from that, he also alluded to T-Roy being a shooter in his track self where he raps, don't care if you with them or if you by yourself. T-Roy got a gun that's bigger than him. T-Roy and his best friend King Von began stacking bodies on April 28, 2012. A few months earlier, a member of STLEBT, Boss Trail, had spotted Sheroid Liggins on O-Block, and with a laser beam on the strap, he took him out with one shot. Police discovered the O-Block member, who hailed from the 2200 block of East 99th Street, lying on the street with a single gunshot wound to the head. Liggins was taken to Stroger Hospital in critical condition, where he remained until he was pronounced dead a few hours after being brought in. After this incident, T-Roy and three others decided to swing into action in retaliation. Together with Vaughn, OJ, and Mthang, T-Roy hopped into a Chevrolet Impala and slowly drove through their op's main block. They were not looking for Boss Trail in particular. Instead, any STL EBT member who they would catch lacking would serve as an example of what was to come. As they drove around 63rd and St. Lawrence, they spotted Marlon Monroe, alias Lil Doc. According to official reports, Lil Doc had been painting his aunt's woodlawn building. After hours of work, Lil Doc felt thirsty and decided to go to a nearby convenience store to buy a drink. As he made his way inside, T-Roy jumped out of the vehicle with his pipe in hand. He didn't waste time letting off shots. Lil Doc tried to make a run for it but was struck. He stumbled and fell into a patch of tall
small weeds in an empty lot near the store. The police came to investigate the shooting, cleaned up the scene, and took off. However, they did not spot Lil Doc. Lil Doc's lifeless body would not be discovered until some hours after the shooting. A 16-year-old relative who was in a rush trying to make curfew was crossing through the abandoned lot when he found his corpse in the 6,300 block of South St. Lawrence Avenue. It turns out that 21-year-old Lil Doc had been out of prison for two months and was on parole for stealing a car he was trying to get his life right. He had received a GED while in prison, was trying to get a painter's license, and had been doing maintenance for property owned by his aunt. This was one of the many bright futures that would be cut short by gang violence. The next op to fall was Sheroid Liggins' killer, Boss Trail. It turns out that before he met his death, he was trying to get out of Chicago. Was he haunted by the death of his victim, Sheroid Liggins, or was he afraid that his ops would catch up with him? He must have sensed that T-Roy was hot on his trail and tried to get out of the streets. He had lived by the gun and knew that he would die by the gun. It turns out that during the weeks prior to his death, there had been several attempts on his life. First, he had been shot at by OB's 600 members. The following week, he was shot at on different days by King Von and Big A. Having panicked for his life, he decided to start life in a different part of the country. He chose Iowa and bought a bus ticket. However, he would never make it out of Chirac alive. According to Boss Trail's bus ticket, he was set to leave Chicago on November 10, 2012. Just three days before he left, he posted on Twitter that he was eager to start his new life can't wait till I get my new start. He was eager not to mess up his second chance at life, so he moved carefully. However, it seems that his tweet may have alerted his ops would let Boss Trail escape from their grip forever. He had to be put down immediately so a plan was put in motion. Rumor has it that T-Roy and his buddies used a girl to lure Boss Trail from hiding. The girl was supposed to set up a meeting with him the next day. Boss Trail fell for it. He arrived at the agreed upon site but was all alone. Suddenly, a vehicle slowly pulled up a short distance away from him. It quickly dawned on him that he had been tricked and took to his heel. However, his op was hot on his trail with guns already blazing. Unfortunately, he was struck and fell as T-Roy and the rest fled the scene. Just two Two days before he was to leave Chicago, Boss Trail was found face down in an alley in the 2600 block of West 83rd Street with a shot to the back of the head. Boss Trail's ops were more than excited with the news of his death that they took to Twitter to show their delight. Boss Trail thought he could get away from the rack, but who he bumped into, one tweet read. With the tactic involving setting up an op seemingly working better than randomly shooting at rivals, it was inevitable that T-Roy's gang would eventually suffer a similar loss. This came in the form of Jay Money's death. Boss Trail's death had left many sad and angry. Among those who were deeply affected was the notorious female assassin K.I. as she tweeted, R.I.P. Boss Trail aka Trap Money BT. And in typical K.I. fashion, she was going to respond with a murder of her own. But before then, T-Roy would catch yet another op lacking and add to his long list of bodies. On June 8, 2013, news broke out that a man had died while a woman survived a gunshot wound to the chest on the slip ramp between 71st Street and 75th Street on the southbound side of the Dan Ryan Expressway. Cops identified the dead man as 27-year-old Frederick Taylor, alias Stuna, of the 14000 block of Atlantic Avenue in Riverdale. A third person in the car, a man, survived. Both victims were taken to Advocate Christ Medical Center. Apparently, T-Roy and two others had pulled up in a vehicle next to theirs and let off shots that killed Stuna. In a video posted on YouTube, T-Roy can be seen brandishing his weapon, mocking the death of his op, clearly happy with the work he had done. You would not look more than me. <laughs> you would, they would not stun a me. <laughs> No, no, I keep that 33. Although it would seem very unusual for people to celebrate murdering other human beings, it is important to remember that they had grown up in harsh surroundings where gun violence was the norm. On top of that, they had seen their childhood friends and heroes killed in cold blood. They had been desensitized to death. To them, they were in a war, and there was no time for remorse, only vengeance. The area had even been named Chirac, a clever play of the words Chicago and Iraq, which showed that the area had become a war zone. K.I.'s revenge would come soon after. On September 2nd, 2013, a 21-year-old man was killed when he was shot in his head and body just after 2 p.m. in the 6,600 block of South Rhodes Avenue in Woodlawn. He was pronounced dead at the scene. The man was later identified as Jerome Wood, alias J Money, of the 5,200 block of South Wood Street. Word on the street is that J Money had been set up. He had left his block that morning believing that he was meeting up with a girl in the 6,600 block of South Rhodes Avenue in Woodlawn. When he got to the meetup location, it quickly hit him that it was a setup. K.I. and her homie were waiting for him with their guns drawn. 
The two shooters opened fire, killing him on the spot. For a long time, T. Roy and his best friend Vaughn had lived by the gun, killing multiple ops and robbing mothers of their children. Their time was bound to come. Ironically, both their deaths were captured on camera. T. Roy's death came first. 2017 Valentine's Day. T. Roy was out doing what he loved the most, catching ops lacking and taking care of them. On this day, one op in particular was on his radar. This was none other than TB from Taekwon World. For extra context, TB had dropped a diss track just one month earlier, where he had taken shots at all his op, including O Block. T. Roy, as fearless as he always was, went to search for TB in the 2000 block of East 71st Street in the South Shore neighborhood, where TB was known to frequent the area a lot, and T. Roy was hoping to use the element of surprise to finish him off. As T. Roy and his friends strolled through the streets, his ops, TB and Can't Get Right were hot on their trail. From the footage, one can see that TB and Can't Get Right were scanning the streets, searching for T. Roy. T. Roy and his associate went into a store on 71st Street. He had just a few minutes left to live. Inside the store, he was on one of the aisles having a conversation with his associate. Seconds later, CCTV footage showed TB and Can't Get Right walking into the store and toward their rivals. TB's right hand was slightly behind him, concealing a firearm. It was unlike T. Roy to get caught lacking. He must have thought that it was a verbal confrontation that would maybe end up in fists. This is most likely what he thought, since if TB wanted to gun him down, he could have waited for him to walk outside as most hits often happen. Or TB would have straight up shot him the moment he walked in. However, he walked towards him as if he wanted to talk. Suddenly, TB raised his pipe and shot T. Roy, who then dropped to the floor. T. Roy was then taken to Northwestern Memorial Hospital, where he succumbed to his gunshot wound. Famous rappers who were close to him were shocked and took to Twitter to express their sadness. This included Lil Durk, Lil Reese, 600 Breezy, and Chief Keef. It did not take long for T. Roy's death to be avenged as TB was gunned down by T. Roy's brother, Headshot King, aka HK. The cycle of violence would continue, as HK was also later killed by Wooski and other Tukaville members. T. Roy's other brother was shot and killed the night King Vaughn died. That day, Vaughn and his entourage flew from New York to Atlanta, where he was set to have an album release party. After the party, they headed to Monaco Hookah Lounge. Unfortunately, an op was in the area, Quando. Quando was about to take a nap inside his car, which was parked in the parking lot. While outside the club, one of Vaughn's boys spotted Quando. Once Vaughn was notified, he got out of his car and walked towards Quando, who was now standing outside his vehicle. A brawl broke out. Quando's right-hand man, Lul Tim, who was inside the vehicle all this time, saw that Quando was heavily outnumbered and that some of Vaughn's men had guns. He jumped out and fired shots to protect him. Unfortunately, King Vaughn was shot and killed. The night's events became even more complicated as cops were in the area and they started shooting towards the crowd. Unfortunately, Slutty was one of those who got hit by the cop's gunfire and passed with Von T. Roy's reputation is still highly regarded in the streets to this day. However, those who participate in his lifestyle only end up dead. If you enjoyed watching this video, click on one of the boxes playing on your screen to watch more similar content.